Hi guys, it's Caroline from Not So Limpy Teacher, and I have a question for you. Is this what your math instruction feels like? If it is, don't worry. Today I have three strategies for you to help you increase the effectiveness of the math instruction happening in your classroom. Let's get started. Tip number one is all about that whole group instruction. We know this is a really powerful part of our math instruction, that whole group lesson. And our advice for you today is actually to make that part of your lesson shorter. And we have some great reasons, so don't worry. Reason number one being your students' attention spans. Even if it is a beautifully planned lesson with all your supplies and all your manipulatives, you know if you get past a certain minute mark, your students are going to start falling off that academic math wagon just because they're kiddos. The attention spans just aren't there yet. Another great reason to consider shortening your whole group instruction time is because of where your students are as learners. No matter how much time you're spending in that whole group lesson, you know there are students who are still going to need extra support from you to master that skill. You also know that there are students who don't need the entire lesson. There are students who are going to pick up on that skill really, really quickly. So instead of teaching these long math lessons, we love the model of a short mini lesson structured at about 15 to 20 minutes. And this mini lesson should really be introducing the skill to your mathematicians. This is not where you're going to want to pound them with practice problems. You're not going to want to have every student working with manipulatives. This time in your math instruction should really to be introducing the skill to them. Then later on, and don't worry, we'll get to the later on, then you can pull those students who need extra support on that introductory skill. You can pull those students who need just a little practice on the skill. And then you can pull the students who are ready to extend beyond the skill. Keeping that mini lesson a shorter part of your math instruction is going to automatically up the effectiveness and the engagement of that instruction. Tip number two to increase that math effectiveness is all about the power of small groups. And I know what you're saying. Okay, I teach a 15 minute mini lesson. What do I do next? Some of us have 90 minutes in their math block to work with. And that's where those small groups can be so powerful. I think small groups are very traditional and expected in reading, but I love a math small group. Math small groups, you're going to want to be grouping your students based on skill and based on ability. And the fun part in that is that there's so much flexibility within a math group because there's so much flexibility within math skills. Students can really struggle with telling time, but then they show that they're very, very aware already of how to add three digit numbers. Because of that, those math groups can be and should be changing really often to reflect student needs. Okay, so I have my small groups. I know that these kids need a lot of practice. These kids need some practice. These students have already got it. They got almost every question right on my pretest. So I need to do something with them. But the question is, what are you doing with them? This is why this model works so well in classrooms, because you can individualize and differentiate your, your instruction for each group. I also love this because it works really well with any curriculum. You can pull whatever resources you already have within your classroom to support those students where they're at within the skill. Think about how much more engaged your students are going to be with that small group setting. They're right where they need to be in terms of ability and you're meeting their needs as a mathematician in their small groups. Another reason why small groups are going to up that effectiveness is because of the control you have. We know as educators, control is very important and it's very hard to give up. And we know as soon as you hand that manipulative to all 24 of your eight-year-olds at once, your control is out the window. 
Using your manipulatives only in small group makes that management piece so much easier. And it means you are ensuring that all of your students are using the manipulatives to support their learning. By only using manipulatives with that small group, the control is there, your students are growing as mathematicians, and you're not gonna have any base 10 block towers being built at your small group table. My final tip today is what you can do with all of the other students when you're working with a small group. I know sometimes that can be really daunting, thinking about, well, I have five here and I have 20 over there, so what are the 20 going to do? We love a spiral review, and we have a lot of options over on TPT for station work and activities. But the use of a spiral review means students are continuing to see previous skills throughout the year working in their math stations. This ensures that students are refreshing their knowledge and reviewing their abilities in the math classroom. At the beginning of the year, think about using station activities that focus on second grade skills if you're in the third grade classroom like me. Beginning of the year is a great time to review previous grade level skills. And then as you teach new content, continue to work those activities into their station time. So they're always reviewing those math skills. If you are looking for more tips and tricks to help you improve the effectiveness of your math instruction, I am so excited. We are announcing our math masterclass. Those not so wimpy teacher master classes are phenomenal. And I say that because I have taken the writing master class and this summer I'm signing up to do the math master class. They are phenomenal classes. Right now, currently, there's a wait list. So if you wanna get a wait list, you'll be the first to know when the course is opened and you'll also get a discount when the course opens if you're already on the wait list. If this card pops up, it means the course is open. It's time for you to head in and sign up. This is a great way to help you improve your math instruction effectiveness. We're excited to see you in the Math Masterclass. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and I hope you are already feeling more effective in your math instruction. No more math manipulatives everywhere, student eyeballs everywhere, and not using our time well. We know that time is valuable and I hope we gave you some ideas today for how you can use that time well in your classroom. As always, pop down in the comments. Maybe there's something you love to do in math with your students every week that is effective and engaging. Maybe you have questions, other things you're curious about. Let us know in the comments. We also have a big playlist of other math content for you, as well as the Not So Wimpy Teacher Math Masterclass. If you're looking for the signups for that, either the waitlist or if it's open, the class itself, I'm gonna have a link down in the description box for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and we hope you have a Not So Wimpy day. Bye.